Limb integration. We use electromyography or EMG sensors to control the contraction of the cockroach leg and a goniometer to control the servomotor. Full flexibility. When the push button is pressed, each muscle movement translates to leg response. In addition, every goniometer movement made maps to the servomotor, spanning positive to negative 90 degrees. Minimal output delay. This is made possible by continuously reading input signals from the session while processing very small windows of data at a time, allowing for a seamless transition between input and output. Individualized sessions. This process initiates automatically, is easy to learn, and can be completed within a minute. Reliability. Performing multiple trials over different users and cockroach legs has confirmed the reliability of the HCMI system. Ever wanted to play mini-golf with a cockroach leg without touching the leg or self? Now, you finally can. Restrictions apply. Only use small lightweight golf ball. We are at the heading bus. Depends on the quality. Do not attempt this in the commercial mini-golf course. It is not cockroach friendly. The following instrumentation was used to model an afferent system such that the motor output of the cockroach was mediated by the sensory input of our human subject and to integrate the biological systems and mechanical components, namely the servo motor. Calibration before each trial ensured a mediated mapping of motion for the cockroach leg and server motor. A large human forearm contraction corresponded to a contraction in the cockroach leg, whereas a relaxed forearm contraction yielded an extension in the cockroach leg. Using the the goniometer, we have mapped the range of motion for the human forearm to a range from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. We devised two mapping metrics. For the EMG, we took the integral of the absolute value of the waveform and compared this magnitude to the standardized measurements determining calibration to ascertain if the contraction or extension would be imposed on the cockroach leg. For the goniometer, using our algorithm, if the angle created by the human forearm, forearm exceeded 0 or 180 degrees, we made the following adjustments.
Here we have Dana operating both the goniometer to move the server motor as well as the EMG to move the, to contract to extend the cockroach leg. And here we see that she's successful at first contracting the cockroach leg and then um, moving the server motor to hit the ball. And she has three successes. So this shows that the goniometry and EMG are functioning properly. And we are ready for the competition tomorrow. It's the day of the competition. We have two players here, Dio and Dana. Dio is controlling the contraction and extension of the cockroach leg with the EMG attached to her. And D Dana is controlling the motor movement with the goniometer attached to her. And we're giving specific targets that we're supposed to hit. And we're able to hit this with Dio and Dana cooperating. And this further proves to show that our experiment was able to work and we're able to achieve good results. In our setup, there was a trade-off between output delay and the consistency of our output signal. In order to make the copper's leg stay in a consistent position between 0.3 second intervals, we had to ignore several readings at a time and extend the signal output to the leg to about 5 seconds. Otherwise, in the pause between intervals, when output signals were added to the queue, the leg would relax regardless of the EMG sending extension or contraction signals. Our design had low repeatability over time with the same copper's leg, as Frequencies and voltages that the leg responded to changed over time, or a particular muscle stopped responding after about 20 minutes. There was also a limited range of movement, since there were three states that the cockroach leg could be in, rest, full extension, or full contraction. Though the servo motor could move to supplement the leg movement, this was a fundamental limitation of our mapping of EMG signals to analog outputs of the cockroach leg. We had greater repeatability between the different legs within the first 20 minutes of setup, since we could change the parameters for extension and contraction for each leg. In conclusion, we were able to successfully create the human cockroach interface by translating the angles of the goniometer to angles of the servo motor and voltages from the EMG to extension and contraction signals to be sent to the cockroach. These were used in conjunction to hit the target points provided by the lab, ultimately achieving a time to hit all points of around 27 seconds. However, there were some important design considerations that may have caused this time to be less than ideal. It was crucial that the goniometer had not loosened throughout its use during the session, as this would dramatically decrease accuracy in the translation of the goniometer angle to the servo motor angle. Now, a problem that was a little more difficult to mitigate was the variability in cockroach legs. By the time we found ideal extension and contraction frequencies and amplitudes, we would only be able to fit in a few runs to try and hit the points before the legs stopped responding. Nevertheless, we are still able to use the goniometer and the EMG to control the movement of the cockroach leg and the servomotor.